you on the Google Stream page so you can uh, see, check out the lecture later on if you wanted to. Uh, at towards the end of the class, I'll mark the attendance as usual. So, I will remind you just in case I don't forget to mark your attendances, right? Um, I have shared my screen with you. So, you, you've got the OneNote one option uh, link with you. You can call me or if you want to follow along with me on, on the screen here, you can uh, use it as well. So, either way, whichever works for you. Um, so, we will change our own way because we are going online. So, it is not the same as being present in the, in the classroom. So, I will do that here. Today, I am sort of uh, going back towards the textbooks. Uh, just to make sure that what we talked about so far in our face-to-face -face lectures um, aligns really well with what the textbook is talking about. Uh, course outline to aap sabke paas maujood hai is uh, again there in the Google Classroom on the stream uh, page. You can access the course outline from there. So far we have been following two books. One is the uh, uh, yeah, on project management a managerial approach. So we have sort of looked at some of the basic concepts of project management so far from that textbook or uh, course outline may those page numbers are listed page there's another book by um, Harold Kirzner. As uh, project management systems approach, uh, and uh, that also uh, has uh, some relationship to the concepts that we wanted to talk about and some of the concepts that we have talked about. So, usme kuch baatein sa ki hai jo rahe gayi hain Kersner ki book se to aaj unko ham tackle karte hain just to make sure ki ham wahan pe piche na rahe gaye hon ya koi isna ki baat na jo hume. Right? So we're going to look at uh, from page 33 all the way up to page 68 of uh, the Kersner book. And here you have a link bhi given hai start mein, where it says page 33 to 68. You have a link given. Hai. You can see that HTTP uh, as colon slash dash b dash ok dot asia uh, etc. Et right? So if you were to click on this link, it will take you to the b-ok.asia website. And uh, it's not a, a good thing that I'm doing this, but uh, uh, this will allow you to access the textbook, right? Or uh, access this book for free, bootleg uh, version. So just go on to this link and you will see a download button. If you click on that download button, this book will instantly download for you, right? So here is a stable URL. Either you can this book ko hasil kar sakte and we are looking at page 33 to uh, page 68 today, right? So any uh, concerns about this or are you fine? Everything okay? I should continue then. So interact If you want to ask any questions during this lecture, please feel free to ask your uh, questions as well. Okay? So we, we looked at basically the evolution of project management uh, in our lectures. And if you recall, we were talking about how projects have been around for a very long time and there is a remarkable difference between the projects that took place in the old days as compared to the projects that we've got going on nowadays. And one of the remarkable things is that there was a separation between the designer and the builder and now there's somebody who is entirely different who sits down and designs the building for you and we know these people as architects and then there are other people who then materialize those designs and put them into practice for us and we call them as contractors or as builders right so that's one of the major uh, 
changes that happen between um, the projects of the old days and the projects of the new days. But having said that, uh, you know, uh, project management does uh, exist and has been existing for a while now uh, in one shape or form. Uh, but how we sort of really understand it to be is what we see uh, uh, from 1959 onward, right? So around the 1940s, if you remember, I told, told, told you that the Manhattan Project was taking place, and that was an interesting uh, project where the concern was to build some sort of a nuclear bomb as a deterrent to what uh, Hitler was building. And that Manhattan Project did use project management to quite a significant extent. However, we would not know much about what went on in that project because of the secretive nature that it had. Right? But having said that, we do know that in the 1940s, there was uh, bits and pieces of, of projects taking place. And it's not as if, you know, uh, other sectors in the government uh, were not using project management. It's, it's not that this discipline got simply uh, built and uh, got created for the Manhattan Project. There were many other entities that were using project management. And because this is an era where the assembly line is, is something that's dominating our thought and the way that we conduct uh, business in, in a manufacturing setting, so naturally the, the way that these projects are being handled back then is what is known as a, a hot potato style of, of management, right? A game hai, maybe you've, you've played it, a hot potato is you, you sort of pretend that you have to be object you you can't sort of hang on to that potato for a very long time and what you want to do is you, you want to pass it between your hands or if you've got somebody near you you want to hand over the hot potato to that person, right? So the idea is uh, that the hot potato style of management, more formally known as the over the fence management style, uh, is that uh, you, a person is, is provided the project, they sort of do the work that they uh, were meant to do, and then that person picks up the project and throws it over the fence. Diwar ke duse paros ko right? And whoever is standing behind the other side of the wall, that person will catch that project and will sort of continue it from that point forward, right? So the hot potato style of management or over the fence style of management is something that we find uh, to be dominating the 1940s. Uh, and implication is that one person who is working on the project is simply concerned with the work that they're doing. And once that person is done with their work, they throw the project to the next person and then they sort of absolve themselves from all responsibility and they don't want to uh, communicate what they have done. They don't want to talk about what went right with them, what went wrong with them. And they just simply want to hand over their task to uh, their completed task to somebody else for, for uh, further completion, right? So in that way, we've got things going from one person to another, right? Now, the problem here is that number one, there's not uh, enough communication taking place between the two people. So there's no communication taking place. And who do you hold responsible in case there's some sort of a failure or some sort of a problem pops up? So everybody has sort of washed their hands clean from the project as soon as they're done with it. And so whoever is hanging on to that project and working on it at that particular moment is the person who would be um, held responsible and they will be the one that will be brought into question, right? So that's at least the idea of this over the fence style of management. Now, this value judgment But the idea is to simply understand that this is one particular way 
of uh, managing projects uh, that, that people were using in the old days. And they used it to great success, if you can imagine, with the Manhattan Project. It worked really well. Um, but will it always work, right? That's the idea. Um, and this is some uh, a thought that we do want to carry <clears throat> forward. So the quick answer is that, no, this style of management doesn't really work. Uh, because, yeah, the, the, the thought is to get your work done and, and pass it over to the next person as quickly as possible. Um, but the, the concern is not about the quality of the work. The concern is not about the relationships that are formed. It's not about communication. It's not about other things. So this is one way of managing a, a project, but perhaps it was not the best uh, way of managing the project at all right so from this then what happens is that the, uh, quite soon um, the, the government specifically the uh, department of defense of the united states they are concerned that they want to have um, one particular person to be held responsible for the project and one single point of communication needs to exist there uh, for uh, whoever you know is concerned about the project or whatever type of questions that they want to ask or uh, whoever to hold responsible for a project so that is something that got mandated by the Department of Defense of the United States and then uh, quite soon after the 1940s and the 1950s we see this emergence of the idea of a single project manager uh, who is going to be held responsible for um, the success or the failure of the project, for the quality of the project, and that person, um, that project manager would be considered to be the single point of contact. Right? Now, from the, this thought then, we move into the 1960s, right? Now, we talked about the 1960s and we said, uh, previously that more and more uh, you know uh, the public sector sort of got involved in, in the sense that not you know I'm, I'm not saying that a lot of uh, public sector uh, related projects took place but rather uh, projects were taking place which were visible to the public right projects such as building highways and projects such as uh, you know uh, building satellites and uh, there was a race for the space if you if you remember um, the Americans ended up on the moon as well and the Russians were also going up into the sky and all that stuff so these were highly visible projects that were specifically associated with the aerospace and defense industries and here a realization happened that okay fine you've got now a single project manager uh, but the concern should be about how to improve our reporting, uh, how to uh, manage our costs better. So we should have some mechanisms in place where if our project is going slow, so we should be able to report that to the higher ups and to uh, the project manager eventually so that that person understands and, and realizes that the project work has slowed down. Um, if the quality is diminishing, then there should be some sort of a reporting mechanism that would uh, bring that into the uh, limelight that the quality has diminished and we need to exercise control mechanisms. Right? So overall, this thought is occurring in the 1960s that there needs to be more concern about uh, improved reporting and there's uh, an increased concern about uh, better cost management right so several uh, things are, are possible in order to make uh, this a realization which is to improve reporting and to improve cost management uh, but one easy way uh, that was determined was to somehow come up with a standardized way of doing things. And the thought was that if we've got uh, standardization, that is um, to say that we've got procedures and we've got steps. So <clears throat> if we've got standardization, we have procedures, we have steps. 
So then clearly we would not be skipping out on something. It would be like a checklist. So we'll do step one and then we'll do step two and step three and so on and so forth. And by doing so, we would be able to improve upon our uh, reporting mechanisms and we would be able to improve upon our cost management and because it's a standard and there will be procedures associated with it therefore we will not be missing out on anything right so whoever follows the standard will be following the same series of steps as anybody else right so therefore that will uh, lead to an improvement right now who comes up with the first standard then is that the project management institute uh, sits down and, and they, they work amongst each other and the members that they have. And the project management institute uh, develops the very first standard for project management and they do it so quickly that by, by the time, you know, around 1970s they started. And by 1973 they are uh, taking the very first project management professional, the PMP exam, right? So this standardization movement uh, uh, got started in the 1970s and it, it really, um, you know, comes full force in the, in the shape of a certification in 1973. So <clears throat> the assumption is that by having the standard of, of the PMI's PMBOK, uh, what would happen is that we are going to have a way of managing projects and because it's a standard um, everybody that follows the standard should be uh, faring equivalently uh, because they're using the same standard so that they'll all be going uh, equally well right at least that's the idea there so this is something um, that the united states uh, defense industry again uh, was behind uh, and the department of defense and the u.s pentagon were the entities that were uh, really pushing this private sector entity of the PMI uh, to, to sort of develop the standard and to bring it into the limelight, right? Or in Kipastani, the United States may a project management institute, a Wahid Institute, the Ustain Pe, Joke Project Management Kiawale Se Kam Kari, people is equal on a push kya or an onika kya jaya or standard. Develop um, uh, this is not the only um, uh, sort of project management institutes that we have across the world. Other countries have their own project management associations and institutions. And in that countries, they have developed their standards. But the PMI standard tha, it was important for the United States. Or yes, ko force kaise kar rahe the? Ye force kaise kar rahe the? Ki jisne bhi department of defense ke saath kam karna hai, to unko bhai uh, they, they, they should have passed the exam for the standard, right? Otherwise, they were not being allowed to work on these government sector defense related type of projects. So this tarikay said it sort of came about. Wo intent is ki kuch aur thi, right? Uh, ab what ke saath what has happened is that this. Uh, PMI standard has, has become very popular and you know, countries like Pakistan and other countries across the world, uh, they have even gone towards the standard. Uh, a lot of the practitioners are, are interested in taking the PMP exam and becoming certified. Right? So start with this popularity it has become a popular standard um, in, in our country. As well, right? However, now you see, who is pushing it? Is the Department of Defense pushing it? What is the private sector? The private sector is thinking that um, this particular certification idea is an overkill, and the private sector is failing to see any particular value to this, right? So this is. Uh, basically a very uh, funky idea that the private sector is thinking that having a project management uh, certification doesn't have any value and more than that the private sector in the 1960s is even thinking that project management as a discipline in itself is valueless right so you do cheese and 
प्राइवेट सेक्टर निगेट कर रहा है 1960s में अब इसको आप अब देखें द गवर्नमेंट सेक्टर इज पोशिंग फॉर इट द गवर्नमेंट सेक्टर इज यूजिंग प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट एंड द गवर्नमेंट सेक्टर हैज पुश टुवर्ड्स द सर्टिफिकेशन ऑफ इट प्राइवेट सेक्टर ऑन द अदर हैंड आप नोट करें स्टार्क कॉन्ट्रास्ट में बिल्कुल 180 डिग्री पे बैठा हुआ है एंड द प्राइवेट सेक्टर इज सेइंग के यू नो टू हेल्प विद प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट टू हेल्प विद द स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन उनको इसका कोई वैल्यू ही नजर नहीं आ रही है वो उसको बिल्कुल रद्द कर रहे हैं और इसको फिर आप रिलेट करें टू दिस अदर आइडिया दैट आई गिव यू वो ये था कि प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट पॉपुलर कैसे होती है इट बिकम्स पॉपुलर ड्यूरिंग द 1980s बिकॉज ऑफ दिस एक्सेसिव अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट्स दैट वर कंडक्टेड बाय द प्राइवेट सेक्टर जिसको हमने फिर नाम दिया था प्रोजेक्टाइजेशन ऑफ सोसाइटी का वो इतने ज्यादा प्रोजेक्ट्स हुए ना तो वो किसने किया वो प्राइवेट सेक्टर ने ही किया था एंड दिस इज दैट सेम प्राइवेट सेक्टर दैट 20 इयर्स अर्लियर वाज थिंकिंग दैट देयर इज नो वैल्यू इन दैट प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट इज एन ओवरकिल राइट सो दिस इज क्वाइट इंटरेस्टिंग फॉर अस एंड देन कर्सनर हमें ये भी बताता है कि 1960s में Uh, most of the projects uh, taking place were using the functional setup right so we did talk about the three different hierarchies if you recall and they dekha ki hamare pa functional hierarchy thi hamare pa matrix hierarchy thi aur hamare pa projectized hierarchy thi so the uh, functional setup is the setup that or the functional hierarchy is the hierarchy that we find to be the dominant hierarchy in the 1960s okay iske alawa hamare pa koi aur hierarchy thi hi nahi and the reason that this hierarchy worked was uh, that it relied on informal communication because these functional departments were already sort of uh, interconnected with each other or in ke input outputs ka aapas mein koi na koi taluq rehta hota hai um, and and these people were already in in good working relationships with each other and they were already communicating with each other aur inke beech mein trust aur aitmad aur ye cheeze pehle se exist karti thi so in in that way the functional setup was highly successful in in the 1960s and it works theek okay? hai फिर हम आते हैं आगे 1970s एंड 80s में अर्लियर आई टोल यू दैट दैट 1970s एंड 80s इज बेसिकली टिपिफाइड बाय द आइडिया ऑफ द यूज ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी राइट सेकेंडली आई टोल यू दैट दैट द 1980s इज टिपिफाइड बाय द थॉट दैट द प्राइवेट सेक्टर कंडक्टेड सो मेनी प्रोजेक्ट्स सो मेनी प्रोजेक्ट्स that we called this particular era as that of the projectization of society now what is happening uh, that, that differentiated the 1970s from the 1980s and that caused this need for having a matrix organizational structure to come about is that there was an increasing need for formal project management processes because projects were getting bigger in size and they were becoming more and more complex right so here <clears throat> you're going to find that there is this increased need for um, uh, f- formalism and ye wohi standardization wali jo drive hai wo yahan pe humne dekha na 1973 mein start hui pehla testers ka start hua so 1980s mein ab uski value bhi nazar aana shuru ho gayi hai aur uska application bhi hona shuru ho gayi hai theek hai um and the 1970s is is again the era in which the department of defense uh, is 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 forcing uh, all the contractors and subcontractors to use project management and to also be certified in it okay or 1980s may so the projectization happens and an over abundance of projects in the in the private sector is taking place and then in the 1990s is uh some something else happens which is that business and society as a whole uh, comes to this realization that project management has value project management is important and it is now no longer a choice for these organizations rather it has become a necessity right um, and you know abhi tak jo projects ho rahe the wo to ho rahe the 
और वो किए जा रहे थे प्राइवेट सेक्टर ने भी किए और पब्लिक सेक्टर ने भी किए बट सो फार द कंसर्न वॉज यू नो हाउ टू सॉर्ट ऑफ गेट इट डन और ये इसकी ब्रेक डाउन्स कैसे करेंगे और किसको क्या काम हवाले करना है और इसका बजट कैसे बनाना है और इसकी जो है रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज किसको देनी है और वगैरह वगैरह सो दैट वॉज द कंसर्न अप टिल दाइनटीन नाइन्टीज बट दैन इन दाइनटीन नाइन्टीज दिस अदर कंसर्न कम्स अप विच इज नॉट ओनली हाउ टू एम्प्लीमेंट अ प्रोजेक्ट बट मोर सो हाउ टू डू एट एज फास्ट एज पॉसिबल Right. So why this focus upon quickness uh, and the speed of business comes about? Uh, well, you can relate that with the idea of the introduction of the uh, World Wide Web around 1993-94, when World Wide Web came. So suddenly uh, there is this new playground and this new way of business and this overly connected society popping up, just me email or per internet ke through communication or per chat messages or whatever. ये सारे प्रेवलेंट हो जाते हैं सो इन द सेम लाइट दिस फोकस अपॉन हाउ टू कंडक्ट प्रोजेक्ट्स फास्टर एंड फास्टर राइट अच्छा अब अगर हम देखें तो प्रोजेक्ट uh, मैनेजमेंट की जो ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस हैं दे दे और ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस इन जनरल जो हैं वो क्या करती हैं कि दे आर एडॉप्टिंग दिस कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट अभी भी देर आर मैनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन have never conducted a project before uh, and they would have to conduct a project uh, one day right so what is the life cycle for this so jo humne dekha tha na software development life cycle wo ek alag cheez thi ye kya hai ye adoption ka life cycle hai ke ek organization kis tarah ke phases mein se guzarti hai jab wo ye choice kar rahi ho ke usko projects karne ki zarurat hai ki nahi aur wo projects agar kare तो किस तरीके से उसके बारे में वो अपने अपने आप को कंसर्न करती है और कैसे उसको एडॉप्ट करती है सो देर आर फाइव फेजेस टू दिस पर्टिकुलर एडॉप्शन लाइफ साइकिल एक को कहते हैं एम्ब्रियोनिक फेज राइट एम्ब्रियोनिक फेज क्या है जिसमें एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एक एक नीड को रियलाइज करती है और वो ये समझ जाती है कि इस प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट के डिसिप्लिन के बेनिफिट्स क्या हैं और वो ये समझ जाती है कि उसके कॉन्सेप्ट को अप्लाई कैसे करना होता है और वो ये समझ जाती है कि उसको करना क्या है सो इफ एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन अंडरस्टैंड्स दिस देन इट हैज एंटर्ड द एम्ब्रियोनिक फेज यानी कि वो जन्म ले लिया है ना उसके अंदर इस इस थॉट ने के प्रोजेक्ट्स होने चाहिए उसके बाद क्या है कि एग्जेक्यूटिव मैनेजमेंट का एक्सेप्टेंस लाजमी है अब ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के मेंबर्स ने तो रियलाइज कर लिया ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के वर्कर्स ने तो रियलाइज कर लिया बट व्हाट द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नीड्स इज द विलिंगनेस ऑफ द एग्जीक्यूटिव मैनेजमेंट क्योंकि उनकी जब तक सपोर्ट नहीं होगी और जब तक वो स्पॉन्सर नहीं करेंगे जब तक वो प्रोजेक्ट्स को बैकिंग नहीं देंगे तो अनटिल दैन देर इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी एनी प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट टेकिंग प्लेस इन दैट पर्टिकुलर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो once the idea builds up number 2 that is essential to have managerial uh, support behind it theek hai uske baad kya hai ke line management acceptance phase hai line management wo hoti hai jo ke front line pe kaam karti hai na wo jo lowest workers hain unke saath milke unke upar uh, baith ke wo foreman ke level pe baith ke na unko govern kiya jata hai aur unko uh, manage kiya jata hai तो जब तक लाइन मैनेजमेंट को तरीका ना आता हो प्रोजेक्ट्स करने का जब तक उनको ये समझ ना आती हो कि यार हम अपने एम्प्लॉ को क्यों गिव अप कर रहे हैं और उसको एक प्रोजेक्ट का हिस्सा बना रहे हैं जैसे आपने देखा था फंक्शनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में और मेट्रिक्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में तो तब तक यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू हैव एनी सक्सेस विद प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट देन द फोर्थ फेज इज द ग्रोथ फेज इसमें क्या हो जाता है कि प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट की मेथडोलॉजीज डेवलप होना शुरू हो जाती हैं अपना लाइफ साइकिल डिराइव कर लेते हैं प्लानिंग की तरफ फोकस चला जाता है स्कोप क्रीप और फीचर क्रीप्स को पकड़ के उनको रिड्यूस करने की तरफ बात चली जाती है और कोई प्रोजेक्ट को ट्रैक करने के तरीक़ार जो हैं वो डिवेलप कर लिए जाते हैं और मेचोरिटी क्या है मेचोरिटी यह होगी कि 
प्रोजेक्ट की कॉस्ट को मैनेज करने के तरीके आ गए हैं प्रोजेक्ट के स्केजल को कंट्रोल करने के लिए कोई सिस्टम्स डिराइव कर लिए गए हैं कोई चेंज कंट्रोल मैकेनिज़म्स बना लिए गए हैं और कोई एजुकेशनल प्रोग्राम्स हैं जो कि ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ने सेटअप कर लिए हैं सो दैट इट इज़ बेटर एबल टू एजुकेट द वर्कर्स दैट इट हैव ऑन ऑन प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट राइट तो ये जो मॉडल uh, है इसको समझना असेंशियल है बिकॉज दिस इज हाउ वी सॉर्ट ऑफ यू नो एडॉप्ट प्रोजेक्ट्स इन इन एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन तो इसको आप देख लीजिए ये पांच जो नाम हैं ब्रियोनिक एग्जीक्यूटिव मैनेजमेंट एक्सेप्टेंस लाइन मैनेजमेंट एक्सेप्टेंस ग्रोथ फेज एंड मेचोरिटी फेज यू शुड बी एबल टू सॉर्ट ऑफ नेम दीज फाइव थिंग्स एंड यू शुड ऑल्सो बी एबल टू ब्रीफली एक्सप्लेन वट हैपन्स इन ईच ऑफ दीज फेज ठीक है तो ये यहाँ पे मैंने आपको इसको ब्रीफ दे दिया है और ये बुक आपको लिंक में ऊपर प्रोवाइडेड है तो वहाँ पे आप इसकी हल्की फुल्की से और डिटेल चेक आउट कर सकते हैं ओके अब प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट की मचोरिटी की तरफ हम जाते हैं और हम इसको अभी देखते हैं लेकिन बिफोर वी गेट इन टू द प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट मचोरिटी आइडिया आई वुड लाइक टू स्टॉप एंड ओपन अप the floor for questions do you have any concerns or questions so far anybody wants to ask anything do you are clear okay sorry thoda sa ye lecture boring sa is liye because hum wo book ko chapter by chapter section by section follow kar rahe hain जस्ट टू मेक श्योर कि हम आगे पीछे ना हो गए हो ना तो थीरी भी इम्पॉर्टेंट है कि थीरी भी साथ साथ में चलती है ओके सो इफ यू गॉट नो क्वेश्चन देन वी वी मूव फॉरवर्ड ओके अच्छा नेक्स्ट क्या है नेक्स्ट एक एक बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग सा आइडिया है जिसको कहते हैं प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट मचोरिटी ओके मचोरिटी क्या चीज़ है मचोरिटी कैसे आती है वो तो हम बचपन से सुनते आते हैं कि लड़कियां जितनी मचोर हो जाती हैं और लड़के मचोर रह रह जाते हैं वक्त के साथ वो भी फिर मचोरिटी हासिल करते हैं बट वट एग्जैक्टली इज दिस आइडिया ऑफ मचोरिटी द आइडिया ऑफ मचोरिटी हेयर इज दैट ए ऑर्गेनाइजेशन will conduct a project once then the organization will conduct the project again and then it will conduct a project a third time and and so on and so forth uh, and the more that they can uh, they perform projects the more well versed they become with the project um the more they conduct the projects the lesser the waste that they produce and the lesser or fewer the chances of making mistakes right so the more mature an organization is the more that organization is going to be uh, able to conduct a, a project uh, in in some amount of speed right us mein quickness aa jayegi uh, that uh, organization will be able to uh, create less waste because uske uska hath saaf ho gaya hoga na usko kuch na kuch tarike aa gaye honge और उसने अपने पास वो नोट कर लिए होंगे और फिर उनको वो अप्लाई कर रहा होगा उस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ने ये सीख लिया होगा कि क्या चीज़ें उसके लिए ठीक से काम करती हैं और क्या प्रोसेसेस हैं जो उसके लिए मसले बना के देते हैं और उन उन मसलों की नेचर क्या है सो दैट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में हैव कम अप विद सम Uh, way of sort of overcoming those issues and problems as well right so this is what makes for an organization to become more and more mature now maturity important is the hai kyunki jaise ke jaise hum aage ki taraf badhte hain to hum seekhte ja rahe hain aur humne ye seekha hai that organizations are now not valued for basically uh, the products that they make only rather they are valued for the expertise that they have uh, in that particular area for example uh, mercedes ki gaadi isliye hum nahi prefer kar rahe kyunki wo mercedes ki gaadi hai hum mercedes ki gaadi ko isliye prefer kar rahe hain kyunki uske piche uh, 100 years plus ka tajruba hai uh, this company knows how to do something 
uh, with a degree of perfection and they will produce a car for you which is going to have the least amount of defects in there. So this is the idea behind this, uh, this thought of maturity. Okay? Uh, organization ke under kya ho hai? Well, organization ke under ye ho hai, jase humne isme dekha na, ye embryonic phase mein recognition of a need, recognition of benefits, recognizing the applications and recognizing kya hume karna kya hai. To jitni ye recognition slowly hume aayegi, utna hi hum projects ko slowly adopt karenge. Jitna hume jalti ye realization aayegi, utna hum projects ko jalti adopt kar rahe so the thought is that organizations are driven by this uh, sense of, of perception of, of some type, right? Now, is it a uh, perception that's related only to the marketplace? Is it a perception that's only related to the self of that organization? So generally, it's, it's more related to what the competition is doing. And if there is a lack of competitive pressure, uh, then these organizations tend to work a bit slowly, but if there is competitive pressure, then uh, and this organization realizes or it perceives the importance of project manager management uh, faster, to then what does it do? It goes more efficiently to the projects. Additionally, if an organization has this internal uh, need for, for increasing efficiency within itself, right? So if that is something that's going on in a, in a non-project driven organization, that is that your organization which is project normally, so other people that project management ka, uh, ek, ek wo, uh, milta hai, push or uh, project management slow hui hai. Specifically in the US, in uh, 2008, the financial market collapses. So there was a crunch in, in uh, basically the housing. This means that So they were not building a lot of houses in the US. Right? Uh, so if you're not building uh, houses, then your builders are free. Uh, and if your builders are free, then basically there is no projects taking place, so to speak, right? So the 2008 was a period where uh, there was uh, slowness. Uh, 2020, what happened? Well, something else happened, right? Not that there were financial markets or COVID uh, pandemic came and because of that, uh, the business landscape has, has experienced a tremendously uh, slow growth, right? Uh, transportation So what has happened is that uh, projects slow. Secondly, the project management is uh, but generally society is generally businesses is realize that businesses are not in the same because now what happened is that interdisciplinary things have started and if a business is only specialized in one thing, then it will not get any ideas in the same way, it will not get any ideas in the same way. What will be the best way would be to somehow get into alliances, to get into partnerships, to get into joint ventures, and if these businesses can bring together two or three complementary skills, uh, so then suddenly we, you, you've got a business that is uh, going to do amazingly different. Right? Just like our Angro Corporation, which is merged 13 companies ko merge karke ye conglomerate. Gaya, right? So this is like one of the first conglomerate businesses that we saw here in Pakistan, which was Angro. And what is it doing? All these things that Angro is doing, it has a fine relationship with each other. So, the 13 industries, there was something that was kept in the first place. Now, suddenly, they uh, combined and made a conglomerate and a giant industry. Right. So this is the idea here as well, that in project management in, in the present day, uh, there is an increasing focus on 
uh, on this idea of ventures and partnerships and alliances. And at the same time, there is an increasing focus on uh, on globalization. Either I book disagree with this book. Uh, हम, uh, the world is a global village. We interconnected. We interdependent. But if you really follow up uh, on the statistics that exist, or map is going to be the TCS, DHL, specifically, is data manage. उसमें हमें ये नजर नहीं आ रहा कि दुनिया जो है अब वो एक ग्लोबल विलेज में कन्वर्ट होती जा रही है रादर वो डेटा हमें ये बताता है कि हम वो टाइम ज्यादा से ज्यादा लोकल होते जा रहे हैं ठीक है तो अब डिपेंड करता है कि हम कौन सी कैप्सूल खा रहे हैं ना आर वी गोइंग फॉर द ब्लू पिल और आर वी गोइंग फॉर द रेड पिल वो मैट्रिक्स वाली मूवी का मैं आपको दे रहा हूं तो इफ यू गो फॉर द ब्लू पिल सो टू स्पीक so then there is this belief that there is this increasing globalization. So if there is an increasing globalization, then in order to be a successful project manager, you need to have what? You need to have good uh, communication skills and you need to have good cultural understandings and so forth. On the other hand, if you take the red pill, then there's this realization that uh, there's actually localization taking place. And there's no need to think about culture and no need to think about, uh, you know, uh, th these these things. Um, rather, the focus should be upon your own people and, you know, improving communications and, and uh, partnerships and so on and so forth. So I, I don't know. I would definitely uh, recommend not taking that uh, blue pill. Rather, I would suggest you take the red pill because at least at least that's supported by data, which is that there's not much uh, globalization taking place. Rather, there's more and more localization taking place, right? So this is where we are. Now, um, let's look at what the story is. Now, the story is that as we go to the project, we will learn projects to learn projects ko hum better tarike se implement karte jayenge so we will eventually come to a point where the cost of of project management is going to sort of uh, become pegged okay uh, pegging ka kya matlab hai pegging ka matlab ye hai ke ek ek minimal cost pe aake hum chipak jayenge aur uske baad aainda ki taraf hum jitne projects karenge वो at least उतनी cost उसकी होगी उससे कम या उससे ज़्यादा नहीं होगी right? uh, this is sort of like an idea that is highly related right बल्कि ये तो एक uh, copy paste मैं आपको कहूँगा ना कि कर्ज़नर ने क्या किया उसने learning curve के concept को उठाया और learning curve के concept को इस वाहियात के सम के diagram में उसने convert करके हमारे सामने पेश किया हुआ है this is the diagram that you see here right this is the one that I'm talking about. And what Kersner is saying here is that initially, right, uh, when you do something, there is going to be a, a slowness uh, and there is going to be an increase in the cost because of mistakes. The cost of doing that business is going to go down. Uh, but you will be able to do it faster and you will be able to do it in a lesser amount of money. So you see this hump taking place here. curve So what's going on is that your cost is going to go But then it will get pegged in the sense that this amount is your bare minimum which is expert तो इससे कम amount of money में वो काम किया ही नहीं जा सकेगा so we actually come up with a peg right so this is the idea of learning uh, and this is something that we call the learning curve and this is what Kersner has taken up and he's sort of trying to present it to us in, in a slightly different manner but the thought is that as we learn 
and as we do something repeatedly again and again and again we reduce the cost of doing that work because we are becoming experts and experts are able to do things much more faster with better quality and lesser waste being produced so uh, it, the cost reduces however the cost doesn't continue to go down towards the zero because there will always be some minimum cost of doing a particular activity. So we call that as the idea of pegging. Or ho kya rahe ki jaise jaise ye pegging hogi, vaise vaise hamara jo benefit ya profitability or improvement in project management jo hum dekh rahe hain, wo hum hasil karna shuru kar denge. Right? So this is um, the idea of having maturity in the organizations. Now. Resistance to uh, change ye hai ke kuch organizations aisi hoti hai jo ke kisi or zariye se paise kamati nahi hai. For example, kuch organizations aisi hai jin ko hum kehte hai ki purely functional organizations hai and what happens in such organizations is that their entire stream of revenue, the, all the money that they make is coming wholly and solely from the functional activities that those organizations perform. Uh, for example, if you take a school, uh, it will be getting all its money from the teaching that it does to the students or on sejo tuition fees and assets. Uh, if you take a uh, you know a shopping plaza, to rent. Basis, right? So this, the pure income of, of that uh, is coming from particularly the functional activities that those organizations are performing. So is there are some organizations that we have and there is concern in Okay, so we've got certain organizations that are of, of that nature. Okay, so what do Functional organizations. Okay, functional organizations were organizations. Hai. Sorry, I described one thing and I wrote it on number two. Pe hai pe. So functional organizations are those organizations that are purely concerned about making money from their functional activities. So these organizations Kitni reluctant hongi or kitni willing hongi project management ko adopt karne ke liye or kya wo project manager ka jo profession hai usko as a profession ta sabar bhi karengi ke nahi. So you'll, you'll find that this is something that is not going to be happening in a functional center. Is ke paraks aap ke paas hoti hai jin ko hamne kaha tha projectized organization. What was going on with those organizations were that ye bilkul functional organizations ka ek 180 hai. In the functional organization, the entire concern is about money being made from the functional activities of uh, the, the setup. And here in the projectized organization, sara ka sara paisa kidar se aare, well, koi functional activity hai nahi. There is absolutely no steady stream of income that this business has. Rather, uh, all the profit and loss is coming from the projects that will be conducted by such organizations. So in type of organizations, mein aapko reluctance uh, nahi ki. is type of organizations, mein aapko ek over abundance of project management or project managers ki. and uh, there's going to be this realization that running projects as a part of the business uh, and it is an essential element. Those key importance is And then the third type of organizations is called uh, matrix organization and Kersner uses the word uh, hybrid organization. So hybrid or matrix organizations kaise conceptualized kiya? So it is conceptualized as an organization that has number one its steady stream of income from uh, set designated functional setup but <coughs> at the same time this organization is able to uh, increase its stream of revenue by conducting uh, or having a few projects on their hand right so the, it's, it's not that this organization is um, 
always going to be having project it is not that this organization is never going to have projects either rather this organization is a functional organization that has realized that it can make more money by conducting a few projects and therefore now it's got a uh, matrix hierarchy right so here we have uh, projects drive किस चीज पे वो ड्राइव हो रहे हैं आपके सेल्स के थ्रू आपके मार्केटिंग के थ्रू आपके इंजीनियरिंग के थ्रू और आपके रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट के थ्रू तो ये आपके ड्राइवर्स हैं द मोस्ट रेजिस्टेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टू प्रोजेक्ट्स इज द फंक्शनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और अगर आपको याद है मैंने लिखा था कि द प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजर इज गोइंग टू बी ट्रीटेड एज अ प्रोजेक्ट कोऑर्डिनेटर एंड एक्सपेडिटर सो दैट्स द थिंग हियर वहां पे एक एक रिलक्टेंस है यहाँ पे आपके प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजर के पास एक प्रोजेक्ट बेस्ड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में या प्रोजेक्ट टाइज्ड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में अल्टीमेट कंट्रोल है वो फुल टाइम है ही इज़ द ओनली एंड सोली रिस्पांसिबल फॉर द प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी और द लॉस दैट द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इनकर्स सो उसकी इंपॉर्टेंस बहुत ज़्यादा है और हाइब्रिड में क्या है वो बस प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजर है और वो क्यों है वो इसलिए है कि इस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ने रियलाइज किया है कि वो थोड़े बहुत एक्स्ट्रा पैसे कमा सकती है बाय कंडक्टिंग प्रोजेक्ट्स सो दैट्स व्हाई इट्स गोइंग फॉर इट ठीक है और फिर हमारे पास ये थॉट था इसको तो हमने देख लिया था कि प्रोजेक्ट्स क्या होते हैं ठीक है प्रोजेक्ट्स तो हमने कहा था कि टेम्प्रेरी हैं यूनिक है डन फॉर पर्पज हैं और यू नो कंस्टेंट बाई लिमिटेड रिसोर्स हैं और प्रोजेक्ट्स जो हैं वो प्रोग्रेसिवली एलेबोरेटेड होते हैं तो वी नो वट प्रोजेक्ट्स आ प्रोग्राम्स क्या बनाए हैं वो भी हमें पता है के प्रोग्राम्स आर अ कलेक्शन ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट्स दैट आर रिलेटेड टू ईच अदर तो सिस्टम्स थिंकिंग के साथ उसका कोई ताल्लुक है कि नहीं दिस इज द क्वेश्चन तो हल्का सा ये सेक्शन है इसको हम थोड़ा क्विकली देख लेते हैं कि सिस्टम्स थिंकिंग है क्या सिस्टम uh, होता क्या है सिस्टम इज अ ग्रुप ऑफ एलिमेंट्स इदर ह्यूमन और नॉन ह्यूमन दैट इज ऑर्गेनाइज्ड एंड अरेंज्ड इन सच अ वे दैट द एलिमेंट्स कैन एक्ट एज अ होल टुवर्ड्स अचीविंग सम कॉमन गोल और ऑब्जेक्टिव और सिस्टम्स का जो आउटपुट होता है उसको हम कहते हैं कि वो सिनर्जिस्टिक आउटपुट होता है सिनर्जिस्टिक आउटपुट मीन्स दैट द सिस्टम के जो कंपोनेंट्स हैं उसको अगर आप अकेले से समझें तो यू विल अंडरस्टैंड वट इनपुट ईच सिस्टम विल हैव एंड वट आउटपुट इट वुड हैव बट इफ यू पुट ऑल दीज सब सिस्टम्स टूगेदर एंड यू लुक एट द सिस्टम एज अ होल you'll find that that system produces an output which is greater than the output that the parts of it provide by itself is ko hum kehte hain na ki 2 plus 2 does not equal to 4 it equals to 5 uh, which means that the parts when added up together uh, are, will, will be giving us an output which is much 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 greater right so this is um, the idea that systems are synergistic now कौन सा सिस्टम है राइट वेयर इज द सिस्टम क्या प्रोजेक्ट एक सिस्टम है क्या प्रोग्राम एक सिस्टम है क्या पोर्टफोलियो एक सिस्टम है सो ये आइडिया अब हम एटलीस्ट अपने दिमाग में रखना चाहेंगे एंड आई बी एड्रेसिंग दैट वेरी क्विकली ओके डू रियलाइज एंड डू अंडरस्टैंड दैट देयर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ सिस्टम्स दैट आर देयर वन आर व्हाट आर नोन एज ओपन सिस्टम्स एंड टू आर दोस दैट आर कॉल्ड एज क्लोज्ड सिस्टम uh normally the easiest thing to do is to say that open systems are normally um uh, people or alive uh, components within a system jahan jahan pe aapke paas insaan aayega wahan pe aapka system at least open hoga why are human beings considered as open uh, systems is because they are influenced by or they are um, uh, you know the, you interact with and are influenced by the environment right so this is the open bit of it closed systems kya hai closed systems wo hai jo ke environment ke sath unka koi interaction nahi hoti for example aapki wall clock jo hai na that would be a closed system so aap na tak tak kar rahi hai chahe aap usko bura bhala kahe aap uske sath achhi baatein kare whatever the clock will do what it is meant to do अब मुझे बुरा भला कहें तो फिर यू नो मेरे काम में जो है ना इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू बी एज गुड एज बिफोर राइट सो कुछ सिस्टम्स ओपन हैं कुछ क्लोज्ड हैं क्लोज सिस्टम्स बाय द वे इंटरेस्टिंग नहीं होते तो उसके बारे में ज्यादा बात करते ही नहीं है 
ज्यादातर हमारी कंसर्न किन के साथ होती है ये ओपन सिस्टम्स के साथ क्योंकि ये बड़े मजे के होते हैं और मैं और आप जो है ना यहाँ पर खैर लिखा नहीं है बट यू एंड आई आर स्पेसिफिक टाइप ऑफ एन ओपन सिस्टम जिसको हम कहते हैं कॉम्प्लेक्स ओपन अडेप्टिव सिस्टम तो हम कॉम्प्लेक्स भी हैं ओपन सिस्टम भी हैं और हम इससे बढ़ के अडेप्टिव भी हैं बट एनी वेल समथिंग एक्स्ट्रा फॉर यू राइट अच्छा फिर है हमारे पास एक्सटेंडेड सिस्टम एक्सटेंडेड सिस्टम्स का मतलब ये है कि वो सिस्टम्स जो कि किसी और के ऊपर डिपेंड करते हैं अपनी सर्वाइवल के लिए उनको हम एक्सटेंडेड सिस्टम्स कहते हैं और एक्सटेंडेड सिस्टम्स आर एवर चेंजिंग और ये उस तरह के सेटअप्स हैं जिसमें अगर आपको रूटीन्स पसंद है ना तो आप फिर एक्सटेंडेड सिस्टम्स की तरफ जाना पसंद नहीं करोगे आपको वराइटी पसंद है तो फिर डेफिनेटली विल बी गोइंग टूवर्ड्स एक्सटेंडेड सिस्टम तो प्रोजेक्ट्स आर बेसिकली एक्सटेंडेड सिस्टम्स वहाँ पे वराइटी ही वराइटी है इससे बढ़ के सिस्टम जो है ना वो तो बहुत बड़ा होता है सो वेर इज द सिस्टम वेल इफ यू हैव ए पोर्टफोलियो देन यू मे हैव अ सिस्टम ठीक है इफ यू डोंट हैव अ पोर्टफोलियो यू जस्ट हैव अ प्रोग्राम सो देन क्लियरली यू 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 स्टिल डोंट यू नो योर योर सिस्टम इज मच बिगर एज प्रॉब्ली द इंडस्ट्री और द सेक्टर बट द पोर्टफोलियो विल बिकम ए सब सिस्टम और फिर आपका प्रोजेक्ट क्या होगा वो एक सब सब सिस्टम होगा या आप उसको कह सकते हैं कि वो एक एक्सटेंडेड सिस्टम है राइट सो दिस इज द थाट है और प्रोजेक्ट्स और प्रोग्राम्स के बीच में जो है सॉरी सिस्टम्स थिंकिंग के हवाले से और और ये जो हमारा जो प्रोजेक्ट और प्रोग्राम का आइडिया है इसके साथ ये याद रखें कि टेक्निकली ये ये कॉन्सेप्ट आपस में इतना फिट नहीं है लेकिन इसके लिए हमें कुछ असम्पन्स डेफिनेटली जहन में रखनी होती है इन ऑर्डर टू सॉर्ट ऑफ मेक दिस दिस फिटिंग पॉसिबल और वो ये है कि हमें ये पता है कि सिस्टम्स जो होते हैं वो कंटिन्यूस होते हैं ठीक है सिस्टम्स कभी रुकते नहीं हैं सिस्टम्स आर ऑलवेज असूम टू बी कंटिन्यूस क्या प्रोजेक्ट्स कंटिन्यूस हैं नहीं वो तो रुकते हैं क्या प्रोग्राम्स कंटिन्यूस हैं नहीं वो सिक्लिकली चलते हैं एक साइकिल चलता है फिर रुकता है फिर देखता है कि इस प्रोग्राम को आगे चलना है कि नहीं तो फिर चलता है फिर रुकता है फिर देखता है कि प्रोग्राम को चलना है कि नहीं तो रुक रुक के जट के खा खा के वो चल रहा है सो इन दैट वे प्योरली अगर आप कहें तो ये सिस्टम्स um, थिंकिंग को अग्री नहीं करता लेकिन अगर हम ये असूम कर लें कि इसका ये रुकना और दोबारा चलना और फिर रुकना और फिर दोबारा चलना अगर ये थॉट हम ले लें तो फिर ठीक है मे बी वी कैन बाय अप दिस आइडिया दैट इट इज ए थॉट ऑफ सिस्टम्स थिंकिंग राइट एंड ये प्रोग्राम्स हमारे पास सिस्टम्स हैं राइट सो ये कुछ वो है एक्स्ट्रा चीज़ें हैं यू मे हैव लुक एट दीज एंड मोर डिटेल वन यू फ्री डू रीड अपॉन दैम के एक प्रोग्राम और प्रोजेक्ट्स में फाइनल डिटेल्स और डिफरेंसेस क्या हैं सो प्लीज हैव लुक एट दिस ठीक है अच्छा अब कैटेगरीज ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट्स भी देता है हमें ये चैप्टर ये कहता है कि कुछ प्रोजेक्ट्स ऐसे हैं जिसको इन्होंने नाम दिया कि ये इंडिविजुअल प्रोजेक्ट्स हैं इंडिविजुअल प्रोजेक्ट्स को इन्होंने कहा कि ये शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन है और ये नॉर्मली असाइन किए गए होते हैं सिंगल इंडिविजुअल्स को ठीक है नॉर्मली आपको ये मिलते हैं फंक्शनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में तो कुछ को इंडिविजुअल प्रोजेक्ट्स कहते हैं कुछ को हम कहते हैं कि ये स्टाफ प्रोजेक्ट्स हैं इसमें नॉर्मली व्हाट वी फाइंड इज दैट मल्टी मल्टीपल फंक्शनल डिपार्टमेंट्स आर इन्वॉल्व तो इनको करने के लिए कोई टास्क फोर्स या कोई कमेटी टाइप की बना दी गई होती है और उनको हवाले किया जाता है तो सच प्रोजेक्ट्स not done by a person per se but by a group of people is called the staff project uh, kuch hai jisko special projects kehte hain aur special projects ke liye aapko koi special uh, arrangements karni padti hain so in in such cases aap kisi ko utha ke koi badi si responsibility ya koi additional authority ya kuch control wagaira provide kar dete hain तो ये आप कब करते हैं ये तब करते हैं जब आपके पास कोई स्पेशल केस हो यू नो कोई डिजास्टर हो गया है कोई और मसला मसाइल खड़े हो गए सो उस केस में जो प्रोजेक्ट्स होंगे उसको हम स्पेशल प्रोजेक्ट्स कहेंगे और मैट्रिक्स या एग्रीगेट प्रोजेक्ट्स क्या हैं वो तो आजकल का जो कॉमन सा फीचर है वो यही है कि वो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दैट रियलाइज that they can make more money by doing some projects along with their functional activities 
so the projects that they do across a large number of functional departments uh, is called a matrix uh, project a matrix projects does require um, an unusual amount of uh, control uh, or because there's a excess use or a, or a vast use of resources that's brought into uh, action right so yeh char amare pa categories hain aur project ma management to ab hame thoda sa samajh aana shuru ho gayi hogi but ye project manager karta kya hai well ye bhi hame is book mein bataya gaya hai is chapter mein ke wo objective setting kar raha hai they're establishing plans they're organizing resources they're providing uh, things to the staff they're setting up controls they're issuing directives there there's a motive uh, to motivate personnel um, and they apply innovation for uh, alternate actions nay nay tarike kar ijad karte hain and they remain flexible uh, because of the ever changing landscape Uh, that we have uh, on life or uske wo jo strange dynamics hain wo require karta hai that the project manager continues to remain as flexible as possible right so this is what the project manager is doing and uh, selectively wo kabhi ek cheez kar raha hoga kabhi dusri cheez unme se kar raha hoga acha tar hame ye yaad rakhna chahiye ke uh, the project manager uh, is concerned about scope right scope kya hai scope is basically um, what it is that the project is going to be concerned but those project ka nature of work kya hai aur uska wo jo essential output hai wo kya hai that is called as the scope of a project right however we will uh, quite soon see that there are two types of scopes there one is called a project scope and the other is the product scope theek hai project scope kya hai it defines the work that must be accomplished to produce a deliverable with specified features or functions so project scope kya hai wo work related hai wo kya hai wo process related hai right wo process ya work ke sath uska taluk hai right right hai the word work is an important uh, term here so the project scope is concerned with the work is concerned with the process right and product scope kya hai wo ye hai ke ye jo work ya ye ye jo process hai once that gets applied na bhai to what outcome do we get to it could be wo teen shapes the na maine aapko bataye the it could be a, something physical it could be something Uh, in the form of a service or it could be something in the shape of a result so ye kya hai ye uh, features or functions hain jo ki aapke deliverable ko shape karte hain aur usko characterize karte hain so project scope is concerned with the process and the product scope is concerned with what we get back right acha ab isi ke sath sath ye kabhi kabhi term aa jati hai ki project manager ek cheez hota hai aur product manager ek aur banda hota hai to inme koi aapas mein relationship ya koi talak hai to ya ha definitely hai pehli baar jab aap kuch kaam karte hai na to wo project manager ka और जब वो काम कंप्लीट हो जाता है और उसको फिर आप रिपीटेडली दोबारा 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 करें तो फिर इट्स नॉट एनी लॉन्गर द डोमेन ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट रादर इट बिकम्स प्रोडक्ट मैनेजमेंट सो फॉर एग्जांपल मैं आपके लिए पहली बार कोई फैक्ट्री का सेटअप करके देता हूँ जिसमें आपकी फैक्ट्री कोई नए किस्म के बिस्किट बना के निकालेगी एंड वेन आई कम्प्लीट दैट सेटअप excuse me that is something that the project manager did for you now running that setup on a daily basis and then coming up with uh, you know production and and things that is the concern of the product manager okay our last jo hamara bet hai aaj ke liye wo ye hai ke again hum is maturity ke concept ki taraf jaate hain jisko humne upar dekha tha ki maturity kaise aati hai maturity aati hai standardization ke through मेचोरिटी क्या करके देती है मेचोरिटी के साथ ये हो जाता है कि आपके चांसेस ऑफ मेकिंग मिस्टेक्स वैनिशेज और आप जो है सक्सेस की तरफ जाते हैं सो हेयर्स द फॉर्मल डेफिनेशन ऑफ मेचोरिटी एंड प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट व्हाट इज इट इट इज द इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ ए स्टैंडर्ड मेथोडोलॉजी एंड ए कंपनिंग प्रोसेस सच दैट देर एग्जिस्ट ए हाई लाइवलीहुड ऑफ रिपीटेड सक्सेस 
बेसिकली वही बात है कि कोई स्टेप्स यूज किए जाए उसके साथ जो प्रोसेस हो उनको फॉलो किया जाए क्यों किया जाए क्योंकि अपने सक्सेस रेट को इंक्रीज कर रहे हैं सो ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट मेचोरिटी हमें क्या करके दे रही है वो एसेंशियली हमें सक्सेस की तरफ जा रही है स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन और प्रोसेस के इसके अलावा हमें ये भी पता है कि वंस वी बिकम अ मचोर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन तो फिर हम एक्सेलेंस की तरफ जाते हैं एक्सेलेंस क्या है अब एक्सेलेंस ये है कि इम्प्रूवमेंट की तरफ जाएं एक्सेलेंस ये है कि आप और ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की और प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजर्स की जिनका आपके ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के साथ कोई भी ताल्लुक नहीं है आप जाके उनको भी हेल्प करें और उधर भी इम्प्रूवमेंट लेके आए राइट अब इसकी फॉर्मल डेफिनेशन एक्सेलेंस की क्या है कि ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल एक्सेलेंस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और एक्सेलेंट प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट और दोज दैट क्रिएट द एनवायरनमेंट इन विच देर एग्जिस्ट ए कंटिन्यूस स्ट्रीम ऑफ सक्सेसफुली मैनेज प्रोजेक्ट वेर सक्सेस इज मेजर्ड बाई वट इज इन द बेस्ट इंटरेस्ट ऑफ बोथ द कंपनी एंड द प्रोजेक्ट कंपनी के और आपका जो प्रोजेक्ट है यानी कि आपका जो कस्टमर है राइट तो इसके साथ वो हमने लिखा ही नहीं तो दोनों के जो इंटरेस्ट में काम होगा वो किया जाए तो उसको हम कहते हैं कि एक्सेलेंस है अब हमारे प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट के जो मेचोरिटी मॉडल है वो वो भी हैं और जनरली और चीज़ों की भी मेचोरिटी मॉडल्स हैं ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के अंदर बट ये ये कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स होते हैं नॉर्मली एक मेचोरिटी मॉडल के है इनिशियल मैनेज डिफाइंड क्वान्टिटेटिवली मैनेज और फिर ऑप्टोमाइज इनिशियल का मतलब यह है कि आपके पास एडहॉकनेस है आपके पास कोई ख़ास प्रोसेस नहीं है कभी आप एक चीज़ करते हैं कभी दूसरी करते हैं कभी एक तरीका अपनाते हैं कभी दूसरा तो इस एडहॉकज़म को कहते हैं लेवल वन इधर से आप जब आके अपने प्रोसेस को लिखना शुरू कर लेते हैं और आप कह देते हैं कि मेरे प्रोसेस हैं क्या और मेरे प्रोसेस को करना किस तरीके से है ठीक है तो फिर आपके पास क्या है आपके पास थोड़ी सी यू नो बेसिक लेवल कुछ स्किल्स आ गए हैं जिसको आपने यूज करना शुरू कर लिया तो उसको लेवल टू या मैनेज कहते हैं लेवल थ्री ये होता है कि आप फिर कोई एडवांस लेवल टेक्निक्स वगैरह को यूज करना शुरू कर लेते हैं और टेलर करके ना उन टेक्निक्स को थोड़ा सा छेड़ना भी शुरू कर देते हैं लेवल फोर ये होता है कि आप अपने प्रोसेस को मेजर और कंट्रोल करना शुरू कर लें और लेवल फाइव ये होता है कि आप उसमें अब इम्प्रूवमेंट लेके आए ऑप्टोमाइजेशन लेके आए और इस लेवल पे ये भी होता है कि आपके जो बेस्ट प्रैक्टिसेस आपने डिराइव करके निकाल लिए वो आप फिर किसी और ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को प्रोवाइड करना भी शुरू कर दें कि वो भी इसको यूज करना शुरू कर दें राइट तो इस तरह से प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट का भी एक मेचोरिटी मॉडल है जिसको कहते हैं ओ पी एम थ्री आई एम गोइंग टू राइट इट इन हेयर फॉर यू उसामा थोड़ा सा वेट कर बचा ये बस खत्म हो रहा है ओ पी एम ओ पी एम थ्री राइट सो यू मे वॉन्ट टू हैव अ लुक अप ऑफ ओ पी एम थ्री दिस इज द बेसिकली द मेचोरिटी मॉडल फॉर प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट दैट इज डिराइव बाय द प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट इंस्टीट्यूट राइट तो वो उसके स्टेप्स को जब आप देखेंगे ना तो यू फाइंड that it sort of matches these five uh, characteristic steps that we have here right to so, usko aap dekh lijiye uh aur fark ye pad raha hai fark ye padega ki as you are conducting these projects uh you are going to become an expert in them and as you gain expertise in your projects what would happen is that it will help you in reducing the uh, waste and it will increase the chances of success that you have right acha ab iske baraks kya tha iske baraks ye hai ki if you don't use maturities uh, you're going to then uh, basically have a very ad hoc type of or a very informal type of project management right to ab aap dekhe usme fark kya hai jitna aapke paas lack of maturity hogi उतना आपके पास पॉलिसीज एंड प्रोसीजर्स बड़े थिक होंगे उतना आपके पास गाइडलाइंस और ये चीजें बहुत ज्यादा होंगी और जितना जितना आपके पास मेचोरिटी ज्यादा आती जाएगी उतने आप इनफॉर्मेलिटी की तरफ ज्यादा बढ़ जाओगे एंड आपके जो चांसेस ऑफ सक्सेस और वो है वो ज्यादा इम्प्रूव होना शुरू हो जाएंगे राइट सो द मेचोरिटी एंड गेनिंग दिस मेचोरिटी 
it doesn't really increase basically policies, procedures, or yes, I cheese. Rather, it helps by making the project's uh, management that we do more leaner in comparison, right? So, or this is exactly what this graphic is trying to show us. Or tajruba bhi yehi kehta hai. Thik hai, humari jo research hai, wo bhi yehi kehti hai ke jo project management ke procedures or standards or yeh saari cheez hai or yeh formula hai or equations, yeh saari jo thopay jata hai na, uh, it doesn't really do anything. Ulta yeh kaam ko aur kharaab karte hai. Karna kya hai, wo yeh hai ke bilkul ee calculator tarikhe se, meticulous tarikhe se, wo kaam kaam ki cheez hai karni hai aur wo kaam ki cheez hai kya hai, वो ट्रस्ट है कम्युनिकेशन है कोऑपरेशन है टीम वर्क है रिमूविंग ऑफ द अस वर्सेस देम मेंटालिटी है एंड अडॉप्शन ऑफ द अस वाली मेंटालिटी है ठीक है अपनी मेथोडोलॉजीज डेवलप करने अपने लाइफ साइकल्स को समझना है अपने कोर स्किल्स को डेवलप करना है एंड दिस इज व्हाट इज गोइंग टू गिव अस सक्सेस तो यहां पे हम जाके रुकते हैं और अब नेक्स्ट हमारी फिर कंसर्न क्या होगी हमारी कंसर्न ये होगी कि फिर सक्सेस होता क्या है और किसके नजर से फेलियर होता क्या है और अगर हम कहें तो फेल तो किसकी निगाह से या किसके प्रस्पेक्टिव से हम फेलियर की बात कर रहे हैं तो ये फिर हमारी कल के लिए और आइंदा के लिए कंसर्न हो जाएगी तो यहाँ पे अभी मैं रोक लेता हूँ एंड आई ओपन अप फॉर क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर या कोई कंसर्न आपके हों तो प्लीज लेट मी नाउ एनी कंसर्न You can turn your mics on if you like. Any questions? Okay, Chale, I'm going to mark your attendance then. Abdul Dayan. Yes sir. yes sir. Okay, thank you. Abdul Moyes Khan Adil. Abdul Moyes. Okay. Abdul Rahman. Abdul Rahman. Can you to mujhe nazar aa rahe? Abu Bakar Khan. Abu Bakar, are you present? Bakr is absent. Ahmed Shahzad. Present, sir. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Aake Bamjid. Present. Thank you. Atif Noor. Atif, I don't see you here. Okay, Atif is absent. Atikulla. Atikulla, sit here. Iman Munir. साफी यूर Present Hikmatullah. Acha ji, Inamullah. Present. Manur, are you here? Manur is absent. Sir. J. Ah, uh, sir, wo present thi. She had an appointment with doctor at ten, so wo she left ten minutes before. Okay, Manur ko maine present kar diya. Mehran Khan. Mehran, you are there. Sir, my error is here. Oh, no, you are not. Allah be present, sir. Sir, you are not. I have done it. I have done it. Atikulla has done it. Okay. So, I am also looking at the name of Krishna. Mehrina Aziz, his name is looking at me. Okay, Baba, I got you. Suleiman Khan, he is also looking at me. Suleiman Khan, he is also looking at me. Suleiman Khan, he is also looking at me. Thank you, Suleiman. मोहम्मद उसामा प्रेजेंट सर ओके थैंक यू उसामा मोहम्मद उस्मान खान प्रेजेंट सर उस्मान और क्यों 
नासर से कंदर आई डोंट सी नासर जैसे नासर इज एब्सेंट उमर अली शाह प्रेजेंट सर गॉट यू उमर शाहिद फरमान प्रेजेंट सर ओके सिकंदर सईद ये मुझे नजर नहीं आ रहे सिकंदर इज एब्सेंट वसीम हयात आप प्रेजेंट हो गए हैं वसीम जरक खान जरा जरक खान है वो एब्सेंट है और सैयद मोहम्मद इब्राहिम यू आर प्रेजेंट ओके अच्छा जी सो एनी कंसर्न्स एनी क्वेश्चंस ठीक है भाई सो so, 